Good morning, modern steaders. Ah, it's a beautiful morning out this morning. 34 degrees, nice blue skies. Good morning, Figaro. What are you doing? When the sun was rising this morning, the sky was red. Yeah, I was supposed to get rain this afternoon. We might as well take advantage of this beautiful morning we have. Good morning, Willow. Blossom, buttercup. Hope, hope a little headbutt when you're walking out the door there, buttercup. Go get him, Hope. Hope, you're not supposed to get in there. Oh, I don't think Hope can fit inside the feeder anymore. That's a good thing. Wonder how much of their seaweed they ate. Eh, they ate probably half of it yesterday. Yesterday we were pruning up some of the apple trees down here. So when we build the barn, they won't be in the way of the equipment. And I gave the goats some of the branches. And they really didn't eat much of them. Scraped off a little bit of the bark there. Some of the buds. Alright girls, behave yourselves. Enjoy the nice morning sunrise. We brought out some seaweed to New York City yesterday. And this morning I got their calcium. For calcium we give them oyster shells that are ground up and that helps with their eggshells. Keeps their eggshells nice and hard. The chickens when they're lacking calcium in their diet, they know to eat the oyster shells. Don't ask me how. We left New York City with our windows down. We couldn't see Let the go. trees and it was too damn loud. I will stand on your border and I'll search through the clouds. Yeah, we left New York City with our windows down. Moose. All right, I got their seed. Now they'll have some calcium. Figaro, are you following us? We're going to get our piglets in a couple of days. I'm trying to figure out where we're going to put them when we first bring them to the homestead. Come on, Pluto. The weather's still pretty chilly, and it's still pretty wet, so I'm just trying to think of the right location to put them in so it's good for them with the weather. You coming? Oh, these guys are growing so fast. You hear the chicks? Maybe next week they'll be all feathered out and we can stick them outside. That is the goal. Alright, kiddos. Let's get, let's close it up now that you're big enough. There you go. That one right there is our olive egg layer. The other one right behind it might be another olive egg layer and the other three are definitely black copper marons. What's the matter, Tanner? You want the chicks? Have a good day at school today. Okay. Love you. Love you. Your water bottle matches your rain jacket and your backpack nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I need to catch the chickens and the ducks that are in the winter greenhouse this morning and bring them into New York City. Oops. With the weather we've been having lately, I don't know if I want to put the new piglets in the greenhouse when we first get them, 
or if I'll be putting the meat birds out here for like a week or so, depending on the weather. So I want to get this cleaned out so we have options to use it for the different animals that we're getting. One thinks it's hiding. We got two. <clears throat> two for one. I like it. Just want to make sure I each got a leg of each of theirs. Two for one again, guys. Two for one. I like when they go on the train. I like when they do that. Moose, we're bringing you some more ladies to take care of. What do you think? Do a little dance. Now just like the goats, the chickens have got to figure out their new pecking order and it'll take them a little while. Our egg production will probably be off for a few days. Got to straighten out the fence and I got to bring out the solar charger. That feels good seeing all the chickens and the ducks out on pasture. Give them an hour or two, they'll all settle down and they're gonna be one happy family again. That looks so nice seeing them out. I'm gonna put out some more feed for them too. That'll help get them to settle down a little bit. That little gray chicken over there, that's our Silky. She's always been our mean chicken, believe it or not. Most Silkies are nice. Our Silky isn't. She's always the one fighting with the other chickens. Oh, and she's usually the mean one sitting in the nesting box. For our solar chargers, we use the Premier One IntelliShock 60. We've been using this for, this will be our third year now. 
We've had really good luck with them. Everything's nice and self-contained. And here we have the battery, which I charged up before winter time. And I'll put my battery back in the box. I'm going to hook up my positive and my negative cable. One of the things I really like about it is it comes with a ground rod. If you have really wet soil like we do, you don't need another ground rod. This one's enough. There's the charger that comes with it and there's room to store that inside. This is not a paid review. This We just use this charger all the time and we've had really good luck with it. And there is links in the description down below to their site. And then my ground rod slides in the bottom. It locks in place. And then this one goes right to your ground rod. So I go right there. Boom. Alright, there we go. The fence is a really nice place to clip onto. Oh, turn it on. We're hitting green. We're good. <laughs> Sounds like the ducks went into New York City. I can hear them inside. Now I just gotta remember we got the solar charger hooked up and when I go to collect eggs this afternoon to shut it off. <sighs> Seeing all the chickens out on pasture makes my soul sing. I love it guys, I love this time of the year. Oh, so good. Moose, you agree? This winter I put a fabric composting bin in our basement. Gina didn't appreciate that. I can't blame her. So we brought it outside in the greenhouse and it's been in here under these hay bales all winter long. We haven't opened it up. We haven't added any water. We haven't added any feed to the worms. So I'm gonna remove the hay bales today and we're gonna see how the worms are doing. If they're still alive, let's find out. Moment of truth. See how we did. It's always good to experiment with different things and see what works and what doesn't work. <sighs> I think it got too dry in there, guys. I'll dig around and find out, but I think it dried up. Oh, maybe not. Damp down there, but I'm not seeing any worms yet. Any worms in here? Now, I'm not willing to write this off as a failure yet. I'm going to add some water to it rehydrate it a little bit but there could be a few worms left in there there could be some eggs in there maybe they'll hatch out and they'll grow again we'll leave it in here for the week i'll keep an eye on it and then i'll see how they're doing if the worms don't come back i'll have to order another package or two and i'll put the worms in here but we'll see what happens after getting the chickens out of the greenhouse and moving around the hay bales, I'm going to put the piglets in here at least for two days to a week. We'll let them get in here. They'll help us root up all of this material so then we can take it out and compost it. And then after that, we'll move the pigs out on pasture and we can move the meat bird chicks in here for a week or so if we need to. Hopefully the weather breaks we can get the meat birds right out on pasture, but if not, we'll use this. You don't want to get wet? No. No. It's raining out again. Who would have thunk it? 
Ah, the goats went in. I thought it was April showers bring nice flowers. Well, it is April. I mean, it is May, you're right, so. Hopefully the rain stops soon, huh? Yeah. Well, it was drying out nicely down here. Now we'll have to see how much rain we get. What are you doing? Girls want some more hay? Hope a dope. Starting to rain out, huh? <laughs> Buttercups are gum out of here. Can't make your mind up. They don't, but they can hear the rain. I don't think they know what to think of your umbrella. Maybe. Because she keeps staring at you. Yeah, she's she going, what is that thing? <laughs> yeah, they're afraid of your umbrella, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> is that a boogie monster? Is Olivia wearing a boogie monster? <sighs> Hope you're not scared of the umbrella boogie monster. Willow, are you having an attitude? Huh? Are you having an attitude? What is that blossom? Uh, what is that? Crazy goats. Hey, crazy hope. I'm gonna shut the door. Oh, coming out. Maybe. Nope, never mind. Hey, you gotta come out the goat door. You better go take care of the chickens before we get too wet. Yeah. Oh, there's some sleet in mixed in with the rain. That's why it's so hard. You girls all getting along? What do your ducks think, huh? Oh, excuse you. <laughs> Look at all them eggs. Thank you, ladies. Tonight with dinner, we're gonna make something we haven't made. I haven't made in probably years. We're gonna do potatoes au gratin. I'm gonna use my mandolin to slice them a quarter of an inch thick.
Tonight for dinner, we're gonna cook up some nice grass-fed steaks from farmfoodmarkets.com. If you guys would like to check them out, there's links in the description down below with promo codes for 10% off. We're gonna cook up some mushrooms and onions to go on the steaks. First, I wanna get the steaks up to room temperature and pat dry them to get all the moisture off. This will sear them up nicer. All right, so while we let these steaks get to room temperature, let's slice up our onion. We'll get our butter melting. Have you heard about Put a little bit of avocado oil, when it falls on you, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, don't you sweat your pretty skin Cause it melts away for it's sincere And you dream about this very night When the moon runs down the sun and the sky It'll be the morning of the spring When the sea runs dry and start to sing Have you heard from the sky? Oh my goodness, those mushrooms, onions, and garlic with the maple syrup, those are delicious. I am not a mushroom fan. I do not normally eat mushrooms, but those, I can eat them by themselves. Those are good. That's going to become a new thing I cook up is the mushrooms with the onions and a little bit of maple syrup and garlic. Oh, you guys are going to try it. That was delicious. Man, I love being able to cook a good meal. The worst part is... I guess it's not a bad part, but if you ever want to go out to dinner after that, you can never find a restaurant that can do as good as a cooking as home cooking. To me, cooking is one of the most invaluable skills. Most invaluable? No, most valuable skills that you can learn. You can, you'll use it your whole life, and you'll never go hungry. Thanks for coming along on today's journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.